Hey guys, welcome to Vintage on Tap. My name is Bianca. If you're brand new to the channel, I make sewing videos to, that show you the behind the scenes of making a garment. Uh, if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. So in this particular video, we're gonna be making the Colette Penny dress, which is this gorgeous, beautiful dress right here. Uh, I actually received this pattern as a, uh, a forward from uh, Colette Patterns just to kind of see how I liked it. Um, I really loved it actually, just because I hadn't made myself a shirt dress before. So I'll be showing you guys uh, the step-by-step -step breakdown of this. But I did kind of want to talk about the new packaging just because um, I've ordered Colette Patterns before myself and they've kind of gone through a few different iterations of how the uh, patterns themselves are packaged up but I kind of really like how this new one is just because when I got it in the mail I'm like oh, this is so nice it comes in like this really cute box now um, and so when you open it up obviously it has a pattern inside and then it comes with this like booklet now the booklet itself um, does have their normal directions you know with the illustrations if you've ordered from Colette patterns before it does have like the really cool illustrations like before but the beginning of it now shows you kind of like photo shoot versions, like more glamour art photos and stuff, uh, which I loved. It kind of gives you styling options and you kind of get more of a feel of the design. Um, for this particular uh, sewing video, I'm gonna be showing you view B, which is with like the half cummerbund and the sleeveless. Um, the only reason I did view B though is because I actually received this pattern back in the middle of the summer or the beginning of the summer when this pattern was released. Uh, and I set the pattern aside just because I was just not touching my sewing machine. Um, if you've been following the channel for a while, you saw that there was like a huge gap where I didn't upload any videos just because I really needed a break. So um, I bought, um, I bought fabric that was very summer oriented. I, I'm using a linen, light blue linen that is not necessarily fall, but um, at the time it was really perfect for the summer. Um, so that's why there's actually no fitting video for this particular dress, just because uh, I put it aside and then when I slowly started kind of getting back to my sewing machine, I did everything without the camera. So um, I'll be uh, just showing you guys the sewing process for this particular dress. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. For the penny dress, I decided to go with this really beautiful linen fabric that I picked up at Brightex Fabrics. It's this um, this really light, light blue, and I figured that it would go well with the flowy version of version B of this dress. So as you're getting started, first thing you gotta do is make sure to take care of all your stay stitching. Neckline, cummerbund, facings for the, uh, for the armholes, skirt, all of it. Take care of all your uh, stay stitching and then for me I went ahead and used tailor tacks throughout rather than marking my fabric. Um, if you've seen my tailor's tacks technique video you know why. Uh, so it actually showed up very well against all the, the blue that I used. Um, as you can see in this shot here though you are going to be dealing with a lot of pattern pieces for the bodice. So as you're getting started, first things first is darts. Now I did a very curved dart for my breast size or for my breast shape. So you can see here against the ruler that that dart is super curved. Um, I'll probably do a video about that later. But for the back pieces, since you're dealing with a yoke uh, for the back, you're actually going to be creating a yoke sandwich for this shirt dress. So here I am pinning yoke, well I essentially called it yoke A in my notes, but it's basically the outer part of the yoke and then once you sew that in place you're going to pin and attach the inner part of the yoke. Um, so the outer part of the yoke is actually interfaced but the inner part is not. So just keep that in mind as you're looking at the instructions because the instructions like, oh, interface your yoke piece. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> so anyway, so here I am opening it up. So you can see there I opened one part of the yoke up and here I am opening up the outer part of the yoke. So you're gonna go ahead and press the crap out of that before you start stitching, stay stitching it. So you just wanna make sure to press it flat, press it as open as you can. And as it's going through the machine, I'm like pulling that yoke apart just to make sure, or yeah, pulling that apart just to make sure that I get um, that yoke sewn properly. Um, the top stitching I did it in, in white thread, and that was just a personal preference just because I wanted to be subtle. 
Anyway, at this point, I'm attaching the bodice pieces to the shoulders. So you're gonna go ahead, or I'm sorry, I'm attaching the front shoulders to the back shoulders, but you're actually gonna be attaching them to one yoke at a time. So here I am attaching uh, to one side of the yoke, and then you're gonna stitch that in place, and then here I am actually going to be turning it inside out. So you're essentially gonna be making a bodice burrito. <laughs> so there I am with the, the ones I've sewn in place, flip it upside down, and there I am with the other uh, shoulder pieces, which again, I'm gonna pin in place and sew in, in place. The instructions kind of were a little bit confusing on this point, so definitely just bookmark this part of the video. If you're making this piece, you can kind of see what that looks like. And then once the burrito is sewn, you're gonna go ahead and flip that inside out. And bam, <laughs> you have your entire bodice set up with the shoulder seams hidden. Essentially, they've been hidden into the yoke pieces. Now, um, you can go ahead and make your skirt pieces. The, the skirt on the back is not attached to this, the, the skirt front at this point because essentially you're going to be stitching the back skirt to the back the front skirt to the front and after you put in the cummerbund which I'm working on here that's when you close up those side seams so just keep that in mind um, that you do need those side seams opened in order to be able to attach the cummerbund in if you're doing view B so um, the instructions also say to interface the cummerbund um, because I used the linen I kind of wish I hadn't interfaced it just because it does make that uh, that cummerbund really really thick at that point. Uh, if you're using a thinner fabric, absolutely interface, but just kind of keep in mind that the thicker the fabric that you decide to use, you may not want to have that. Um, so you can actually, I actually cut out a lot of me struggling to try and gather this linen up just because it was pretty tricky. Um, I mean, just because of how thick it was. But anyway, so you're going to want to go ahead and pin right sides together and then you're going to actually sew all the way around that piece. And once you turn it inside out, it kind of looks like this. Now, uh, when you press that cummerbund, just press it really lightly. You don't want like really hard creases on there. You still want it to be kind of a floofy sort of piece. But you can see here that I, I am attaching that cummerbund to the side seams because the side seams are still not sewn together. So you're going to be pinning it at, um, where you're supposed to, you know, if you have your tailor's tacks or whatever marking you decided to use. You're going to pin it to the side seams, and then when you sew the side seams closed, it's all done in one fell swoop. You can see how the cummerbund overlaps, and it's looking pretty good so far. Now we just have a few other smaller things to worry about. Alright, so for the armhole facings, um, if you did a full bust adjustment like I did, please go ahead and redraft your facings just because they're going to be too small for the armhole afterwards. Uh, keep in mind that the yoke does go over the shoulder just slightly and you can kind of see that a little bit on the dress form there. So um, your, you know, your facing should reflect the true top of the shoulder. Now from here, these are all the collar pieces. You have the upper and lower collar and then the uh, collar stand. So I am at this point in the video sewing the under collar. Now, please keep in mind as you're working on this collar that there's a couple different things at play. Number one is that you are dealing with a bunch of layers of interfacing and a bunch of layers of fabric as well as it being in a very, very obvious place on the piece. So you wanna make sure to be as careful as you can in keeping your stitch uh, consistent, straight, that you're, you're doing the right amount of stitches. You can see here, I'm going really slowly and double checking and I'm like, no, that's not right. <laughs> and then two stitches through, it's like, okay, cool, that is the corner before I continue. Um, you just want to make sure to be extra careful because, you know, once it's done, people are going to be able to see it right off the bat. And you just, you don't want to have any wonky stitches around an area that other people will see. So obviously, like, don't beat yourself up, but if you have to undo it, it's totally cool. There are some areas in here that I had to undo myself off camera. But anyway, trim down your collars. Um, you can grade your seam or just trim it off completely, which I prefer to do. And then you're going to go ahead and turn your, your collar inside out. You can see there, I'm using my fingers as just a point turner. Um, 
I know there are tools for that, uh, but for this collar in particular, it's not um, it's not pointy enough that I really needed that tool. I think I may have used the back of a toothpick for like a second and then decided against it. <laughs> um, but go ahead and press that, maybe a little starch depending on the fabric that you use, and you can go ahead and top stitch that. Again, being super careful that your top stitching is looking on point. Cool, so at this point, you're gonna uh, attach your, uh, your collar stand to the collar piece. On one of the collar stands, you're gonna go ahead and turn in this, the bottom seam allowance, stitch that in place. Again, being mindful that you are sewing through a bunch of layers, so go slow. And then you're gonna attach the other side of the collar stand. <laughs> so one side of the collar stand has its seam allowance turned in, the other does not. That's the only difference between those two pieces. Pin everything in place just so it doesn't wiggle. Again, being careful and mindful that you wanna make sure everything is as exact as you can be for the collar and then go ahead and sew that in place. Now at this point, this area here is where I'm going through about seven layers between the linen and the interfacing, all the interfacing that's going on here. So if you hear your machine struggle, um, go either slowly, go, you know, you know, maybe expand your stitch length just a tiny touch. Um, you might need to change out the needle. Um, if the fabric has gotten too thick there and you need something more like a, a more of a workhorse sewing needle. Um, if you're you know, using really thin fabrics, this might not even be an issue for you. So I am well aware that it just really depends on the fabric you use, especially here. Like you can see here, I actually struggle for like a second here. It's like, uh, it's hard, it's hard to cut all through this. Um, but go slowly and uh, if you have to kind of div up, di divide up the layers in order to cut them down and trim them down, go ahead and do so, whatever works for you. Now, Basically, the collar's almost done. You're gonna go ahead and turn it inside out at this point. And then again, take it back to your iron and press the heck out of it. <laughs> Once the collar is pressed, it is ready to be attached to your dress. So there are notches on the collar stand that you're gonna wanna head and match up to your dress itself which I go ahead and do pretty quickly. Luckily, because of that stay stitching, the neckline was had been able to keep its shape, so don't forget how important stay stitching is in the whole process. And go ahead and attach it. So once the collar is attached, you know, you're able to move on to some of the smaller things once the collar is in place. Uh, turn your collar inside out and tuck in those raw edges of the neck as well as on the ends. And then you can go ahead and either whip stitch that closed, stitch it with the machine, and move on to your buttons and all that sort of smaller hardware. And then you're ready to roll. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I love sewing this particular dress. I do have some detailed photos of some of the uh, different aspects of this piece over on my website. I also have some fitting tips, uh, at least for things that worked for me that might be useful for you if you decide to make this dress. If you've made the dress, go ahead and uh, leave a comment down below, or if you have any questions about it, go ahead and leave comments down below. I'd really love to be able to help you guys uh, more with this piece if you have any like hesitations about it. Um, also, if you're on Instagram, go ahead and follow me at Vintage on Tap. I'd love to see any other projects that you've made. I'm always really curious to see what people, uh, if they've learned anything from the videos or anything they're finding useful from them. Uh, with that said, share, like, subscribe, all the places, all the stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.